So, uh, I hope you're watching Renaissance Man. Uh, by now, if you have done so, you've made up your mind probably whether or not you're going to accept the extent of the swearing that goes on there. It doesn't really get any worse than what you've seen already. Uh, I'm not sure where you are at that point. DeVito, th that's the way you spell his name. I wasn't sure uh, yesterday. Uh, all right, uh, I can be so brief here because what I w really want you to do right now is watch the movie and, and get into it, but then stop. That, that's the hard part, stopping, I think, because if you like the movie, you're going to want to keep going. But I really would like you to stop because I want to analyze this. In a way, maybe I'll write this down later on. In a Shakespearean play, they talk about five acts, and, and the first act has, has exposition, they call it where you have to find out who is who and, and what's going on. Well, that's what's gone on here at the beginning of it. And remember, when I used this in public school, I didn't use the first part at all. I just told them what happened in order to save time. But I watched it uh, just now, and I really enjoyed it. There were things that I, I had not realized. For one thing, echo. An echo is a literary device, and I, I taught about that already. It's back there in Literary Devices, and I know the movie well enough, and by the end you'll probably see what I mean, that there are echoes being prepared. There's at least four um, so far in the part that you have watched, if you've watched it. Now, you wouldn't know, but since I know the whole movie, I realize, aha, they've, they've planted them, because these things are going to echo later on. Illusion, a literary device. Well, there have been probably more than one, but I, I should have capitalized Wheel of Fortune. I think that's the right show. At one point, when Rago says, can I buy a, a vowel? Or, that's an allusion to a, a television uh, a quiz show, and I think it's Wheel of Fortune. I usually ask the kids, what, what is that? And they usually get it. There's also an allusion to Gomer Pyle. He's a famous character uh, out of movies. I don't know too much about him, but, but it's in there as well. Musical themes have been established. There are certain, a theme is something that keeps coming back and coming back, and, and the movies will have these, and, and in the beginning there are certain uh, uh, musical tunes that have already been established by this time. I wanted to point out the cadence marching. Uh, already it's begun, where soldiers, they march, but they shout as they do it to a beat. Uh, he calls it singing. He says they're always singing. But uh, I think that's the way you spell this, cadence marching. You'll see more of that. And it actually, there's a good reason to have that in there. Uh, I believe that this movie has very, very cleverly been put together, uh, I think, from my knowledge of the movie. I, I, I've looked it up and on uh, IMD... Internet Movie Database, IMDB, and I've read about it, uh, but I, I, in a way I feel like I, I'd like to read more, especially about the man who wrote this movie, uh, because I think it's been very cleverly written. Uh, there's an example of black English. This is in linguistics, black English. When, when those soldiers come marching in, they say, left, 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 right, left, like that. I, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm just obeying a rule in black English, which I might have told you about already, I'm not sure, that if a word ends with two uh, uh, consonants, the, the second one is omitted. It's one of the rules of black English. That's pretty standard. And the same thing actually happens with, with vowels. Right is the way that would be spoken in standard English, I guess you call it. But when you've got a, a, a diphthong, the second sound is often left out, so you come up with rot, rot, left, 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 rot, left. Uh, and, and uh, you, you know, you hear that as an example of black English. It, not very strong, but a little bit. And still, I wanted to point out that there are these accents. <laughs> Uh, these very, uh, you know, for people who are not Americans watching this, you may not even be able to hear the difference. I don't know, but uh, but they but these characters are taken from different parts of the United States. Probably the most extreme accent is one, the one from New York, Benitez, 
New York, or I, I don't remember how he said it, but they, they make fun of him having that accent. Um, okay, uh, what I'd like you to do, tomorrow I'll have more to say, but I still would just like you to watch this. And I, I can tell you this, that there are eight characters among the soldiers. There's eight of them. And uh, I, I'm hoping eventually you'll know their names and you'll know more about them. You're going to find out more about them in what you view uh, for tomorrow. I'd like you to look at parts four and five. And if you're not looking on YouTube, if you have the movie itself, the place where I'd like you to stop is where he's sitting there saying, I'm teaching Hamlet to the double D's. And then stop. And, and uh, tomorrow I'll have a little bit more to say. See you then.